Throughout the time that humans have been on Earth, we have known the Earth to look like this. But doesn't it kind of look like South America can slot in next to Africa? Kind of like a jigsaw puzzle? That's because we think at one point, the continents did fit that way. See, the Earth's crust is broken into a bunch of plates that have some big consequences when they move around. My name is Yesenia, and using some graham crackers and some whipped cream, I'll be your guide into the shifty process that is plate tectonics. If we could cut into the earth like a cake, we would see that it is made out of layers, a solid inner core, a molten outer core, and the mantle. Today we are focusing on the mantle, which can be further divided into the asthenosphere, which is a layer of rock that's under so much heat and pressure that the rock actually flows like a liquid, and the lithosphere. The lithosphere sits atop of the asthenosphere. It's made out of some of the same stuff and the Earth's crust. The crust is where we live, right on the surface of the Earth. It's like a shell that's broken into a bunch of different pieces called tectonic plates. Because the asthenosphere is hot and moving, the lithosphere, the crust on top of it, actually moves around with it. Big things happen at the plate boundaries, where the plates meet, and there can be some beautiful and sometimes scary consequences. Let's see if we can recreate some of those plate boundaries using the graham crackers and the whipped cream that I mentioned before. You're also gonna need a plate to put the whipped cream on. Um, I'm using some red food coloring. Uh, you'll definitely need some napkins. And maybe something to poke holes into some of the graham crackers. I'm gonna be using a skewer. So first, let's use the whipped cream to lay down our asthenosphere. I'm gonna use red food coloring to make the whipped cream asthenosphere look more like magma. Make sure you have a good solid layer of whipped cream. I'm just using a little spatula to kind of spread out the food coloring now, using two pieces of graham crackers, we can start with our first plate boundary. So I'm gonna put, that's one tectonic plate. And for this tectonic plate, I'm gonna use a skewer to make a couple holes. So what I'm gonna do is actually put the graham cracker down on a paper towel and try this again. And what you're aiming for is you just want a little hole like so. Now the reason I'm doing this will become apparent in just a second. We place our second graham cracker on top of our asthenosphere. Sorry, our second tectonic plate on top of our asthenosphere. The first plate we're gonna try to recreate is a convergent plate boundary. At a convergent plate boundary, plates come together. They converge. Now you also have two scenarios in a convergent plate boundary. You could have two continental plates that collide or a continental and an oceanic plate combine. So in the first scenario, let's do a continental and an oceanic plate. When it's a continental plate, it means that there is more land than ocean on that plate. Those plates are less dense than the oceanic plates. So when those plates come together, the oceanic plate will dip underneath the continental plate. But because it's doing that, then it will force some magma up through the continental plate. The oceanic plate will actually melt as it dips underneath the continental plate. So some of that plate that is melting into magma will be forced back up through the continental plate into a volcano. The Ring of Fire is an active volcano range that's almost 25,000 miles long, and it's being caused by the Pacific plate being subducted underneath a bunch of continental plates. When two continental plates converge, one can't sink under the other because they're a similar density. So instead of what happens is that the material between the plates 
will crumple up and form a mountain range. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, see how it crumpled up there? The Himalayan mountains were caused when India started a crash course collision into Europe. The collision is still happening today, so the mountains might actually get higher over time. The next boundary that we'll recreate is a divergent plate boundary, where plates move away from each other. This happens most often on the seafloor when two oceanic plates are actually moving away from each other, and is consequently called seafloor spreading. As the plates move away from each other, magma rushes up into the space that they leave behind. It's actually creating new crust. This new oceanic crust forms a huge underwater mountain chain called the Mid-Ocean Ridge. Now, occasionally, you can also have two continental plates that move away from each other, and it creates a continental rift valley. This is happening right now in East Africa. Eventually, when those two plates move away from each other, they'll create a new ocean. The last type of plate boundary that we'll recreate is a transform plate boundary. This is when plates don't create or destroy new crusts. The plates just move past each other. As the plates move past each other, they build up a lot of tension, which will eventually snap. And we feel that on Earth as an earthquake. California has one of the most famous transform faults running right through the center of the state called the San Andreas Transform Fault. Part of California lies on the North American plate and the other part of California lies on the Pacific plate. The Pacific plate is moving northwest as the North American plate moves past it in a southeast direction. That means that eventually Los Angeles is going to be north of San Francisco. It's not going to happen during our lifetime, but it will happen eventually. So 180 million years ago, the continents were all pushed together into Pangaea. Today, we know the world to look like this. What do you think the world will look like in another 200 million years? Can you use your graham crackers to try to recreate that? I hope you didn't think that information was too shifty, but thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next Family STEM Saturday. Hey, what did the tectonic plate say when it bumped into the other tectonic plate? Sorry, my fault. <laughs> <laughs>